smells so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is so amazing. I am extremely grateful to be able to be here, um, sound mind, and speaking my story. Um, it has been a journey. It has been such a long road. Uh, I can tell you that um, I need you to buckle up. I'm going to take you for a ride, and I don't drive very good. So hang on. Um, hang on. I'll get her. Oh, yeah. She, this, this is kind to say step into it. What she means is get to the goods. All right, so I've been with Kara Support Society uh, February 18th. It'll be six years. I'm in my fifth year of a new life, just entering into my fifth year. Um, I have left behind quite a lot of different deals that were really not in my highest and best interest. Um, what I mean by that is Throughout life, I had chosen different things that diminished me. And it was because that is what I knew. I had core beliefs of unworthiness. I had core beliefs of I didn't matter. Um, my family, I have to just stop for a second. Coming here today, um, Prior to writing my story with Diana, I was all in. It was such an amazing deal to actually be able to do this. And about our second week, my mom took ill December 4th and passed December 27th. And in that time, I have to say, Diana stepped up with me and came alongside and you see because what happened with that in my broken family is things shifted, things divided even more so than where they were at. So without that support from, without her supporting me, I don't think that I would be able to be up here today. And I can't cry yet. I'm going to kind of hold my shit together, she would say. <laughs> the bodily function. <laughs> my upbringing was difficult. Um, my family, my mom and dad both suffered from trauma. My father came from Italy. Um, he was a young man, eight years old, in the time of the World War II. My mom came from a large family, a very poor family, and they worked very hard. My parents met and they fell in love. And it was, it was still love, but it was very codependent. And with that, um, I was the firstborn and I have a brother. So I want to kind of keep that short, but in those times of my mom and dad and their friends and their friendships and people coming in, this is where I met my trauma. And my first trauma was, actually it's not in my story, a lot of things are not in my story because I have decided through inspiration in doing this, I'm writing a second story. And my second story will have more details. So back to my trauma. My very first trauma is being a young girl of four years old, hearing a loud bang, seeing many people in a home, not understanding why, seeing extreme sadness in and all around me, and with that, what that was, was my grandmother's eldest son had committed suicide. My granny was babysitting me. That was a hidden trauma for many years. I had no idea it happened. I did not understand why I was so sad all the time because I had an extreme sadness, but I also had an extreme happiness. My next trauma entered at age nine. And this is when, once again, my family were socializing. My father was a minor and 
an event took place that evening with an older gentleman that changed the rest of my life. What I see in and around all of this here and now and today is that I had different coping mechanisms and I shut myself out from the world. I lived very much so in and out of addiction between four walls. And in those four walls, very lonely, very sad, very wearing a mask on the outside of it. Um, I was a caretaker. I was fortunate at the time when that happened that the best thing my mom did for me was send me to my grandmother's. My granny, five generation grandma, she's the most beautiful thing I ever or my daughter or any of our family members experienced. She was strong. I never knew that she would cry in parts of my the way I dealt with, okay, so I have to back up. This is okay, breathe in, just slow. <laughs> My trauma at nine was not validated. I felt for the first time a blanket of shame that was so heavy, the rejection from my mom. But now looking back, it was the only thing she knew to do. The only other option was the RCMP and or social services. My mom was ill too. From witnessing and seeing what happened to her oldest brother, my mom drank. And I grew up in that. Our roles changed. It was hard. It was a hard upbringing. But all that bad from that time on until I was 16, I could flip for better now. Not so much then, now. At 16, I had two children. I had a little boy who, I must say, I still want to include in every way and every part of my day. And each day, I hope today is the day. It'll be different. My son is very affected. I said, we have a shattered family. We do. And the only thing that I can do, which Anita Forbes has been said before, love and acceptance, it's the only thing that I can breathe in, breathe out today to make my life walk forward and not harm myself through different choices that I choose to um, um, grip onto. Alcoholism, substance abuse, relationships, very unhealthy relationships on purpose, like, let me find the bad guy, right, so I can feel safe, nothing, no harm will come to me in that kind of situation. My next child is here today, and this is such a miracle, because being with Karis, we've had so many events, she's here today, this is our first event. Uh, and her partner's here too, so hi, <laughs> Christina's mom. <laughs> um, my daughter, I uh, love her so much because honestly, she is, I'm going to miss some years for you here, but just know when you go to read my story, page 69 gives you a view of where I was at, every part of me six years ago almost, and how I was, how I felt, what I looked like, and it, it's very truthful, honest. Oh, the microphone, darn it. Um, it's exactly where I was at. Um, I was so, so ill. My daughter stayed beside my side. I was so ill. She took me to her home. <laughs> she took me to her home. I was leaving a relationship and I was terrified. I was in the middle of the bush. She looked at me and said, Ma, nothing's going to happen to you here. And in that, we really thought I crossed a line. And the line I crossed was in my mind due to substance abuse, the relationship, physical abuse, all of it, the self-abuse, 
by choosing that. The other thing we learned as I'm leaning in there, I went to Esther House. I first applied with Karis, and this is why I was at Christina's home. No one really in Kelowna could take me because here's the part I've missed with y'all. I had been 25 years plus in and out of addiction in Kelowna treatment centers, recovery programs. Oh, I could get like a year, two, two and a half years at different times and really do well in my community. But as soon as I got lonely and forgot about some of the tools, I would relapse and it would be much, much worse than before. So finally after this, I called um, in one day, I was at one, one um, Harmony House, I had applied to go there and the director said, mm, I think you need more long term and I was like, oh yeah, I know I do, like come on bring it, I'm in, I want it, that's, that. I know this, like I've lived about seven years communally over the years and on purpose, I chose it, it wasn't that I had to, it was that I knew that if I did it any other way, I was not going to live to see tomorrow. And that's the truth. Um, so my daughter uh, kept me at her home. I made a phone call. On the one day, I had three confirmations. I think you should go to Esther House. Oh, you should go to Esther House. Hey, you should go to Esther House. And I was like, Maybe I should try this extra house. So I made a phone call and I was like all dramatic, right? Like, because, well, that's the other thing. If I had a second name, it'd be drama, trauma, and chaos. That would be my name, right? Like, I was so caught up in my trauma. It was what defined me, not my addiction, not my alcoholism. It was actually trauma. It was such a gift to really finally find this out. I remember the day my doctor diagnosed me and he said, he was looking at me really funny and I thought, I really crossed this line now, hey? And he said, you have severe post-trauma, PTSD. Yeah, and I did. Um, <clears throat> the other part I haven't said yet is my daughter has two beautiful children and in my time of healing, she stayed on my side. She made it hard for me, but she made it tough love. She was like, you know, and but she would bring the kids and we would do our Dairy Queen tours. And then as I got a little bit better staying at Esther House and learning this new type of healing, I just, they called it the, um, um, what do you call it? Um, like a Christian base. base. Uh, it, it was God's love house, and, and all that there was in that home was love. So um, I'll speak more about that in a minute. Um, so as I got better, my daughter opened up the door, and she would say, like, hey, come for the weekend. And I'd be like, come for the weekend? What do you mean, come for the weekend? I get to play with those kids all weekend. <laughs> and that's what we did. And that's what helped me. That was one of the things that helped me. Um, but leading up until that time, this is what really helped me. I seen my daughter. I was 42 years old. Hang on. I seen my daughter and she looked at me and she said, mm -hmm. Where is my mother? Where is that woman of integrity? She was broken and sad, and she was crying. And my kid, she was strong. She had to grow up some real hard deals with me. And that is what moved me. I still wasn't better, and I still didn't know if I could do it. And then when I was 47, she said this, anger, anger spewed out of her. And I was like, this is what I've turned my child into? She was so mad at me, and I was too much for my heart. 
because I knew it was true. I hurt her so bad. And she said, Mother, I can't believe this has become your life. And I knew that I had to fight really, really hard to come back and make a difference again. She's seen me with other women in recovery in my good times. She was a part of it. She came to meetings. She lived with me at a house. She knew about it. She broke the chain. She broke the chain. It was so beautiful. So, okay, I've still got that dilemma going on. I'm at Esther House. I hope that wasn't too much for you, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, it's good. Okay. It is the truth, and it was the, what do you, what do you call it when you go up a mountain, like a crevice? Uh, how much? Five? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. So at Astor House, um, I learned about other things like dancing. So um, before this building, there were houses. And as I said, Esther House was a love house. Like, I mean, everywhere you looked in this house, there were love, 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 right? And that's almost the last thing you want to see when you're coming in broken. But the other part of that was I had three weeks one-on-one -on -one with Anita Forbes. And every morning she would say, God's right there with his hand outstretched to you saying how much he loves you. And I'd say, oh, oh, I love God, I love God. And she'd say, wait, no, no, you don't get it. He loves you so much that if you actually really understood what that meant, it would deflate us. So I started listening to her. I thought, this woman knows what she's talking about. Like, look at all the love around the house. Look how great she's doing. She's beautiful. She's radiating. Oh. I want them, but she has, right? I had done all these other things and they were starting to fall short. So also in this home, creativity was the deal. We danced. There was a group of girls, Miss Jar, and we would dance. So for this building, our creative circle would go up to Bottega and we'd dance. And uh, when we were dancing, we raised money for the building. Isn't that pretty cool? Hey, Jar? I love dancing, it was wonderful. Um, I love Karis, Karis saved my life. There are so many stories, I got a little tripped up in the beginning by talking about the other things, but um, I think as, you know, leading up here, I was terrified, what the heck am I gonna say? And each time I tried and I videoed, it was like, oh, I don't wanna do that, that's not real. I wanna be authentic. Like, where's my authentic Dina? Like, come on, Dina, rise up, get over the bridge. Come on, it's time to call other people over the bridge with you. Look, yeah, I got hurt. A man hurt me terribly at nine years old, but other people came in community, and especially at Karis, to walk alongside that trauma with me, and how they did it in helping me heal, Besides our prayer warrior, Alva, it's so nice to see you, honey. Oh, I love you so much. Was they encouraged us. And didn't tell me like all the stuff I did that was wrong and bad and I needed to make amends for. They told me what I did that was good in the process. And part of what I did that was good in the process was uniquely, I love to draw. When I was that little girl at nine, that's how I raised that crap that happened. Oh, that's not very ethically. Okay. I mean, it's fine, right? It's true, it was crap. <clears throat> Be honest, it was a lot of crap, eh? Yeah, okay, now I'm going ego. Um, it's hot up here, got really hot up here. So, Anita would say, draw, paint. Jerry would look at me and say, you wanna do what? Oh, I guess so. And then I started showing her pictures and she'd be like, you should draw. <laughs> Long story short, I left and returned to everything that I left uh, in the first place to get well. And when I did that, I went back to everything. I actually shortly in relapsed. There was a situation. I ended up with a spiritual experience as well, like you've heard in our panel here. And what I've seen in that time, I don't want to detail too much. It is in my story. Please do read all of our stories. Um, and tell your friends, and their friends, and their friends. Mm -hmm. um, what I've seen and felt. So one, I've seen color. 
no color on earth can I yet seek out to find. The other thing I seen, or I mean I felt, was peace. And the last thing that went with that was love. And when it came to, or whatever happened, I'm not sure. I'm not going to label anything, really. I don't think so. I just knew something was different. And I just knew there was a better way. That I knew it was like a warning or like a lovely love letter of ever after. There's the label. A love letter of ever after. So, going forward, I end up in the life for about eight months. I put the drug down. I don't go back to that anymore. I end up having to be at a residence that isn't that healthy. And finally, I get the go. I get the green light. Kim Gehring says, you're in, you're in. That took her a while to get me moving on that. Kim was my aftercare worker for about uh, almost five years of my whole time here um, with Karis. Uh, I've been out for like a year and a bit now. And that's the first time my whole entire life I've lived alone. And I'm 54. So that's a little part I wanted to say in the beginning. When I came back to Karis, I did the day program for six months. And I stayed a little bit in dance. And then I needed something new. So I got a hold of some of my books. And I started drawing a little bit. And oh, it was all right, nothing special. And then one day, Jerry Pauls took me aside and said, hey, we've got this new dream project thing happening. And I'm like, what is it? Then she started telling me. And she was, I was like, ooh, that sounds pretty cool. So I went to that and we had three, um, we had to give three deals that we wanted to do. So I gave my three and honestly, just to let you know, I fulfilled all three without even knowing I was actually doing it. I just found my paperwork um, from the time of Dream Project when it first started. Uh, so in that process, we had a launch party and at the launch party, Leslie Ann Evans had come over, she heard a few of us got to get up and speak and say what they wanted to do. And while I had all these pictures and I wanted to put them in a book and I wanted to put a few words, but I knew it was very expensive to publish a book. Like I, it was very expensive. And I was like, so that scared me away. I was also at the same time, I've had much surgery on my, um, on my, um, on my mouth and Kara supported me with that. So I was already paying back $4,700, which is all paid back, by the way, all done. They didn't just help me actually smile inside out, they really helped me smile. So uh, that was supposed to be back there in the story too. I got it all mixed up, but at least it's there. Because it's not in my real story. I gotta wrap it up. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> just two minutes, Leslie Ann, met with me, said, look, can I see your pictures? And so she looked at them and then um, she said, oh, I have an idea. I can't tell you about it right now, but I'll come back and tell you later. Uh, a little while later, Jerry Pauls again says, hey, come here, Dina, I got an email that might interest you. And I was like, oh, what's that? And she goes, there's an art showing at Red Couch, application being sent, I wonder if you're interested. And I said, oh boy, yeah, am I? So just to wrap it up, and, a little, little long-winded. <clears throat> you spend a lot of time on your own. You like to talk a lot. And there was a lot of years in those four walls, man. <laughs> Tell you, you got to make up for it somewhere. I got the power. Look, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> Had uh. Okay, carry on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. I love it. <laughs> oh, I did it again. Stop touching it. Um. Can you edit all that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so I had two art showings at the Red Couch Art Gallery. We had a fabulous lunch party. Everyone that left that night were so full. It was just like, so inspiration isn't just about me. It's like being up here telling my story or painting my picture or, you know, a soul girl or whatever it may be. And the person who comes upon it and looks at it and is having a bad day or has some really heavy stuff going on in their life. And all of a sudden they may see that mermaid over there and they're like, oh, everything just drops away, it falls away. You know, 
they start to smile. They're like looking at it. And I was like, you know, honestly, I'll share in a big room. I was tripped up on money. I'm getting older, right? Like I'm 54. Perfectly antiqued is what my grandson says. <laughs> He's right. Uh, but it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the money anymore. And so I'm going to wrap that all up. There might be stuff I left out. Um, in general, writing my story for Daring to Share has stretched my heart. It was very heart stretching. Um, there were eggshells to walk on like I did my whole entire life. Certain people saying, don't do that. I'm going to do this. And, um, you know, I was, I was threatened legal issues. And I went right to Diane and I said, whoop, whoop, whoop. Someone that's not very happy with me says, they're going to do this thing. And I, she said, what did you say? I said, I'm covered. She said, are you? I said, nope. <laughs> no, but I am. Large, large wings in our skies. So with that, I'm so grateful my daughter's here. She's going, thank you. Thank you. Time to wrap it up. I'll wrap it up. I know I have to wrap it up. Kim Gehring, thank you so much. My very first aftercare lady. You taught me so much in the Genesis Pro project and um, so, so much more. I was a challenge, I know. <laughs> um, Anita Forbes, you were like a mom to me that I desired my whole entire life. You're much too young. And now, Irene Hildebrandt, I just said the same thing to you. You and Elle are like my mom and dad. I thank you so very much for everything you have ever done for me. And you're both too young to be my parents, too. I love you very much. Irene has bridged over my communal <clears throat> living on my own deal. Every month we go for lunch, and we most of the time have a really good talk. Other times, trauma comes in. One more gratitude. Leslie Ann Evans, thank you so much. You believed in me. You created Red Couch for people like me. That's the deal. It was people that weren't known and maybe not given a chance with talent. You said, my job is to do this with you. And I looked at you and said, let's see what God has to say about that. We're like soul friends. We're like soul sisters. Don't always talk, but we always know. And you taught me so much, so I'm very grateful for that. One more thing, living communally, sisterhood. You have so many women. I've met hundreds of women, hundreds and hundreds, 17 treatment centers, but Karis and Esther House, they're loving me. That's what did it. They loved me. So I know, long-winded, but it was not bad. Thank you.